Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing how to use the Zoom video conferencing platform on your desktop, as well as how to secure your Zoom meetings so that you don't get unwanted visitors during your video calls. The best way to learn is to actually do it yourself, so feel free to pause the video and try each feature yourself. Additionally, you will find timestamps below so you can jump around to different topics. So without further ado, let's get started. First, you will need to download the Zoom desktop client. Go to this link. The Zoom client will be automatically downloaded. Open the client file, which is called zoom.pkg, and then install Zoom. Once you've downloaded the client, sign in with your email address and password if you have a Zoom account. If you don't have a Zoom account, click Sign Up Free here, which will take you to your browser. Once you are signed in, you will be prompted to open Zoom on your computer. Click the Open Zoom.us button. Once you are signed in, you can just simply open the Zoom application whenever you want to start a meeting. Before we start creating Zoom meetings, we need to go to your settings to secure the meetings we create. Click on the gear icon, then view more setting, which will take you to your browser. You can also use your browser to go to zoom.us slash profile slash setting to access your Zoom settings. The first thing we need to do is to enable waiting rooms. This will require participants to stay on hold until the host lets them in. You can click on the edit icon below to customize the title, logo, and description of your meeting if you would like. Additionally, make sure the toggle for passcodes are on for all meetings and turn on embedding passcode in the invite link. Participants will need passcodes to join your meetings. Let's start with scheduling meetings. Go to your Zoom application on your computer. Click on Schedule. Type in the name of the meeting. Indicate the date and time, whether or not you are using your personal meeting ID or generate an ID automatically. Of course, require a password. Choose video and audio settings. And finally, connect the meeting to a calendar you use. You have more options here. I would also recommend muting participants upon entry. And if you're only going to be connecting with individuals from your organization, then click here to secure the meeting even further. You can also indicate alternative hosts by typing in their email addresses here. By clicking Schedule, Calendar will open on your web browser so that you can save your meeting to your calendar. You can also schedule a meeting within your Google Calendar. To do this, go to the G Suite Marketplace site. Then search for Zoom for G Suite add-on. And then click Install. You will need to give the add-on permission to access your Google Calendar. Now go to your Google Calendar on your desktop web browser. Click on the Zoom icon on the right sidebar of the window. Then sign into your account. Here you will get a list of all your scheduled Zoom meetings. But you can also start an instant personal meeting by clicking here. I'm now going to choose a time for a Zoom meeting. As you can see, a Zoom meeting is being prepared on the right. Once you have checked over the settings, click Add Meeting. You will see that the meeting has been generated. Now type in the title and click Save. To invite people to your Zoom meeting, click on the calendar invite, then edit the event, and type in the email addresses of the people you would like to invite. If you have the Zoom website open, you can easily create a meeting by hovering over Host a Meeting, and then indicating if you would like to start a video meeting with your video on or off, or with the screen shared only. You can also join someone else's meeting here if you have the meeting ID. You can also create a new instant meeting on your desktop's Zoom application. Go to the drop-down arrow for meeting options. Decide whether you want to start your meeting with your video on or off. You can also use your own personal meeting ID, which is your personal virtual room that is permanently reserved for you. For this example, I will go ahead and create an instant meeting without using my ID. A new window will open. Here you can join the meeting with the computer audio. 
However, if you are using external mics or speakers, I recommend you test them out here. Once you've tested them out, click on the blue button. You'll find that participants are waiting to be admitted. Click on the Admit button when notified. So here is the meeting interface. At the top left corner, you can find the meeting information by clicking on the info icon. At the top right corner, you can change the layout to gallery view or speaker view, and also enter full screen. At the bottom of the screen, you have the toolbar. Here you have the controls to mute and unmute yourself as well as a drop-up menu where you have additional audio options. You also have the option to start and stop your video, as well as a drop-up menu to go to the video settings. I recommend clicking on Touch Up My Appearance to get a more professional and polished look. You can choose a virtual background where you can display an image or video as your background during the meeting. Choose one of the backgrounds Zoom provides or click on the plus button to add your own image or video. Click here if you have a green screen background. Once all your participants have joined the meeting, it is crucial to click on lock the meeting. This will not let any more participants join the meeting, even if they have the meeting ID and password, a crucial security feature you will need to use. Additionally, you have the option to allow participants to share their screen, chat or message others, rename themselves, and unmute themselves. If you want more control of the meeting and want to minimize disruptions, I recommend not giving participants these abilities. Here we have important options where we can remove them from the meeting or even report them, all of which are valuable tools for security and when inappropriate behavior is observed in the meeting. For the participants tool, you can see who is in your meeting, as well as who is waiting to be admitted in the waiting room. This tool provides you with controls for the following features for each participant. You can click mute if you want to turn off the mic of an individual. If you click more next to a person's name, you have the option to chat the person individually and stop their video, especially when you find a person being disruptive. You can also make participants the host or co-host of the meeting, which will give them controls of the meeting features. You also have the option to rename participants. Here we have important options where we can put participants in the waiting room, remove them from the meeting, or even report them, all of which are valuable tools for security and when inappropriate behavior is observed in the meeting. Below the list of participants, you can find the nonverbal feedback feature, icons that let your participants communicate with everyone in the meeting without disrupting the meeting. When participants click on an icon, it will appear next to their name. If I agree with the comment that was made, I could click on the like icon or the clap icon. At the bottom, you can also mute everyone in the meeting by clicking mute all. You have the option to allow participants to unmute themselves if you want. Additionally, if you click more, you have access to additional controls that can affect all participants collectively. You can ask everyone to unmute, mute everyone upon entry, allow them to unmute themselves, play a sound when someone joins or leaves, allow people to rename themselves, lock the meeting, and enable waiting room. In the drop up button, you have the option to invite people. You can invite people from your contacts list or email people directly. You can also copy the invite link or the invitation here. In the chat tool, you are able to message every participant by clicking on everyone in meeting or private message people individually by clicking on their name. You can also chat with people who are in the waiting room. Click on everyone in waiting room. Then type and send your message. You can also indicate who your participants can chat with by clicking on the three dotted icon. For example, I could have participants only be able to chat with me or with everyone publicly and privately. With Zoom, you have the ability to share your screen with your participants. After clicking the Share Screen button, a new window will pop up where it will give you the option to share your desktop screen and the applications you have open. You can also click Files to share your files directly from Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, and Box. Under Advanced, you can choose to share a specific part of your screen, share only the sound coming from your computer or what is being captured from a second camera. Let's go back to Basic. 
and choose an application I have open. You can also share the whiteboard, which allows you to annotate a white space. You can save an image of your annotations by clicking on Save at the far right of the toolbar. As you can see, only the application I chose is being shared with my participants. The green bar indicates that you are sharing your screen. If you want to pause your sharing, click here. And if you want to stop sharing, click here. My favorite feature of Share Screen is Annotate. This gives you an additional toolbar where you can add text, draw, and add stamps. Click on Select to move your annotations around. Click Spotlight to turn your cursor into a Spotlight mouse pointer or a small arrow pointer to display for your participants. Click Save if you would like to take a screenshot of your annotations, which will be saved onto your computer. Next to Annotate is Remote Control, where you can give control of the mouse or keyboard to a participant by clicking on their name. Here's the feature that allows you to record your meeting. You can record and download the video to your computer directly, or you can record to Zoom's cloud service. Let's click on Record on this computer. You will see that I'm now recording the meeting. You will find the Pause and Stop Recording buttons here. When you click Pause, at the top you will be notified that the recording is paused. When you click Stop, you will be notified that once the meeting has ended, Zoom will convert the recording so you can access the video file on your computer in the Zoom folder. Now if you record it to the cloud, you will get an email notification when the cloud recording is ready to be downloaded or viewed. To access the file, go to your web browser and enter zoom.us slash recording. Scroll down and click on your recording. Here you can watch the recording, share it with others, download it, delete it, or rename the video recording. Up next are breakout rooms, a feature that allows you to split your participants into separate sessions, up to 50 different sessions. Here, indicate how many rooms you want to create and whether or not you would like your participants to be split into sessions automatically or manually. Let's create a breakout room and assign participants manually. Here is a list of breakout rooms that we have. I will rename it by clicking here and then assign participants to the room. Below you have an options button where you can have participants move into breakout rooms automatically, allow them to return to the main session, add a time limit for when breakout rooms will close, and also a countdown after the closing of rooms. Let's open the breakout room by clicking here. Your participants will be notified to join their breakout room. You as the host can also pop into any breakout room you've created by clicking join and find the same features you had in the main room. Let's leave and go back to the main room. At the bottom of this window, you can broadcast a message to every participant in all the breakout rooms. Let's go ahead and close the rooms. Since I added a 10 second countdown, participants will see a window indicating when the room will close. Click here to choose one of two reactions, clapping hands or thumbs up. A reaction will be displayed for 5 seconds next to your video window. To change the skin tone of your reactions, click on your profile picture on your desktop's Zoom application. Then Setting. And under General, you can choose the skin tone of your reaction. When you click More, you will see options to broadcast your meeting live on Facebook, Workplace by Facebook, and YouTube. For my account, I only have the Live on YouTube option. By choosing this option, I can broadcast my meeting onto YouTube. After signing into your YouTube account, you will see a page where you can change the title of the meeting, indicate who can watch the live meeting by choosing public, unlisted, or private, and then click on the Go Live button. As you can see, Zoom is a powerful tool. However, security is very important to consider when using this tool. Here's a quick review of how to make sure your Zoom meeting is more secure. First, make sure your meeting is locked after all your participants have entered the meeting. This will not allow anyone else to join the meeting even if they have the meeting ID and password. Second, ensure that you have enabled the waiting room feature so that you can choose who to admit, making sure to deny anyone who is not supposed to be there. Third, if someone has entered your meeting who isn't supposed to be there or is being disruptive or inappropriate, 
you can use the remove option under participants. And finally, you have the ability to limit what participants can do and what they cannot do, such as sharing their screens, chatting or indicate who they can chat with privately, renaming themselves or unmuting themselves. So that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you take a look at the description of the video to find all the resources you will need to get started with Zoom.